unbelievable. The final journey of B-11 turned out to be more dramatic than expected, with reports of a significant explosion. What exactly transpired? Meanwhile, ESA is gearing up for a milestone with the Ariane 6 launch, having completed all preparations and standing by for liftoff. In the east, Japan is making strides with its new rocket, the H-3. Join us as we delve into these developments on today's episode of Great SpaceX. Flight 4 concluded with numerous successes, notably achieving the milestone of landing both stages on Starship for the first time. During the live flight broadcast, the camera angle showed only a brief glimpse of flames as B-11 made contact with the water. This limited view left viewers uncertain about the events unfolding. Subsequently, SpaceX provided an alternate angle revealing a fire near the booster just before it reached the water. However, the camera quickly reverted to the original livestream perspective, preventing a clear understanding of B-11's final moments in its journey. But astonishingly, recent sources have unveiled new images from a different angle, purportedly captured by a buoy SpaceX deployed to photograph the rocket's landing. These images reveal a startling revelation. There was an explosion. Previously, we had understood there was a fire at B-11, but this new disclosure is truly astounding. Many may initially doubt the authenticity of this image, but analyses by Lab Padre and the space engineer examining lens angles, signal light effects from buoys, and comparisons with previous incidents strongly suggest its validity. Now, examining the images reveals a significant explosion, notable for its large mushroom-shaped cloud. Estimates place the explosion at approximately 210 to 260 meters in diameter. The formation of a mushroom cloud indicates the release of energy at lower pressure compared to the surrounding air. Supporting the arguments regarding the explosion, Lab Padre also released infrasound measurement data from the B-11 landing process. The data illustrates a pattern where sound waves diminish after the booster engine cutoff and shutdown, intensifying during critical phases such as boostback burn, landing burn, and the suspected time of the explosion. Particularly around the estimated explosion time, the infrasound waves appear dense and robust, indicating heightened activity on the booster during that period. This may explain the sustained flames observed in the live video when the booster touches the water. Previously, it was speculated that these flames were caused by the engine hitting the water, spilling fuel onto the surface. However, the explosion hypothesis now provides a clearer and more compelling explanation for these observations. Basically, the analysis suggests that after the tipping over process, the booster's fuel tank might have been damaged, causing fuel to leak and mix. This scenario is reminiscent of the SN10 incident in 2021 where the prototype exploded due to methane fuel leaking into the liquid oxygen tank. Additionally, a potential issue with the fuel line could have caused the failure of a middle ring engine. This problem might have led to a more substantial fuel leak, contributing to the large explosion. Of course, this analysis is based on expert data and observations. For definitive confirmation, we still need to wait for an official statement from SpaceX. Even if that's true, there's no need to worry. Explosions are quite normal during test flights. These tests often involve ocean landings, where the engine heats up during operation, while the fuel tank remains relatively cold. Contact with water can cause a sudden temperature shock, potentially leading to system issues. Additionally, the fuel systems inside Starship are complex, which keeps the risk level high. These issues are likely to decrease as SpaceX upgrades its rockets and implements new landing methods, such as catching with a Mechazilla arm or landing on a drone ship. These methods will enhance precision, However, SpaceX must address the problems that could lead to explosions in both the ship and Super Heavy. If the Mechazilla arm landing method is used, an explosion could damage critical systems like the chopstick or launch tower, resulting in failed catching attempts. Therefore, SpaceX must leverage all available data to enhance its systems. All eyes are now on B-12 and S-30, the prototypes slated for the upcoming flight. S-30 has undergone significant changes in its heat shield system aimed at improving re-entry and landing safety compared to S-29. Meanwhile, B-12 has been stationed in Mega Bay for an extended period, sparking curiosity about the modifications it will showcase. These details will come to light during its rollout to the launch site for the upcoming static fire test. Nonetheless, SpaceX continues to advance its systems steadily. B-11 and S-29 played pivotal roles in achieving SpaceX's milestone of fully landing the rocket for the first time. 
This achievement sets the stage for future flights to accomplish new milestones. Aligning with Elon Musk's vision, which was recently affirmed, SpaceX will colonize Mars. But let's take a moment for a small discussion. What are your thoughts on the intriguing revelations surrounding the explosion of B-11? Let's continue this in the comments section down below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel to stay updated on SpaceX's journey. Shifting gears, let's head south to French Guiana, where preparations for the debut of Ariane 6 are finally complete. The 62-meter tall, or 203-foot-tall rocket is poised to launch from Europe's spaceport, located about 4 kilometers or 2.5 miles from the former Ariane 5 launch pad. This mission marks the first of two planned launches for the rocket in 2024. The Ariane 6 rocket represents a culmination of efforts involving 13 European states and over 600 companies across Europe, with Ariane Space serving as the prime contractor. The launch site is overseen by France's space agency. Frank Wibon, head of civil programs at Ariane Group, emphasized, We will keep in mind that this inaugural flight marks the beginning of a crucial phase in the Ariane 6 program. The planned launch of the Ariane 6 rocket is nearly four years behind its originally scheduled debut. Initially slated for 2020, according to ESA's announcement in January of 2017, the program faced challenges, including development issues with both the first and second stage engines. The loss of the Russian Soyuz rocket posed a significant challenge for Europe as it couldn't rely on that launch vehicle to fill the gap between the final flight of the Ariane 5 rocket on July 5th of 2023 and the debut of the Ariane 6. Once certified, Ariane Space aims to launch the Ariane 6 rocket between 9 and 12 times annually on average. They plan to conduct the second flight later in 2024, with six launches scheduled for 2025 and eight for 2027. Officials have indicated a backlog of approximately 30 missions, with 18 dedicated to launching Amazon's Project Kuiper internet satellites. Ariane 6 enters a competitive launch landscape, currently dominated by SpaceX, which has launched 67 times in 2024 with its Falcon 9 rocket and once with its Falcon Heavy. It also faces competition from newer launch vehicles like United Launch Alliance's Vulcan rocket, targeting up to 25 launches annually, and the upcoming new Glenn rocket from Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin. The upcoming mission holds significant importance for ESA. It remains to be seen if Ariane 6 can revitalize the aerospace industry following delays and consecutive challenges against SpaceX. The stakes are high, it's now or never, for ESA, to demonstrate Ariane 6's capabilities and competitiveness in the market. Turning their attention eastward, Japan achieved a successful launch of their new rocket, the H-3. On June 30th at 11.06 p.m. EDT, or July 1st at 3.06 a.m. GMT and 12.06 p.m. JST, the H-3 rocket lifted off from Japan's Tanegashima Space Center, carrying the Advanced Land Observing Satellite 4, also known as Daiichi-4. ALOS-4 was successfully deployed into low Earth orbit as planned approximately 16 minutes after liftoff, according to commentators on the webcast provided by the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. The two-stage H-3 rocket was developed by JAXA and Mitsubishi Heavy Industries. It is designed to replace Japan's H-2A rocket as the country's primary medium-lift vehicle with the H-2A expected to retire later this year after more than 20 years of service. Despite its successful deployment, the H-3's path to orbit encountered challenges. Originally scheduled for a debut launch in 2020, difficulties in engine development and other issues delayed its first launch until March of 2023. Following its troubled initial liftoff where the H-3's upper stage engine failed to ignite, resulting in the loss of the ALOS-3, or Daiichi-3, the H-3 rocket made a successful comeback on its second flight in February of this year. On this mission, the H-3 carried a 5,900-pound or 2,600-kilogram mass simulator as its primary payload. The rocket successfully reached orbit and also deployed two small Earth observation satellites, CESATIE and TIRSAT, which were secondary payloads. These efforts mark significant achievements for Japan. It remains to be seen if Japan can leverage these successes to establish itself as a new powerhouse in Asia and the global space industry. But we are excited to see what comes after. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.